Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brewing with Jim. Oh, we're both here. We are. We're, we we're made it. Ready to go. We're here. Here we are. <laughs> um, my name is Joseph Jasper. I'm the co-host, producer, question asker, and so forth. More importantly, I'm joined in the studio with Mr. Jim Brewington. Uh, and I do nothing. I <laughs> just, right. Joseph does it all. I, I do, just come yeah. in here and sit down yeah, and exactly. we talk. I put the microphone in front of your face. You don't even have to move. I don't. It's great. No. You've got it made, yeah. Jim, is what nice I'm trying to say. Nice studio, too. It's a very nice uh, studio. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is this uh, exchange is yeah. weak. It is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Let's move on. Go ahead. This is a show where we get audience questions uh, about all aspects of life, and we do our best to provide, um, if not answers, at least wisdom and, and or, or guidance or inspiration of some kind. Uh, the question we have today, uh, as always, comes from an audience member. Um, this one is probably, uh, to some extent, based on the subject uh, from one of our students here at CBCS. Uh, but is this from a student? Probably. Probably. We yeah. don't really know. Yeah, we don't know for sure because it's anonymous. But yeah. okay. the question is this, and you can kind of look at it and say, ah, it's probably from a, a, you know, an adolescent of some kind. The question is... <laughs> some kind. Of some kind, you know. <laughs> okay. The question is, how do you deal with peer pressure? Uh, oh, it's great. Yeah, okay. Well, here we go. Yeah. Um, definitely from somebody younger. I think uh, so, yeah. But not exclusively. No, no there not are, at all. There are, I know plenty of adults oh, yeah. that are subject to peer pressure. To peer pressure. In ways that are detrimental or... or, or, or it, yeah, Anyway. But the, but the point uh, the question is how do you deal with it? Yes. And that just I think I'm inferring that the person wants to deal with it, recognizes that go. this is peer pressure. That's and, great. And uh, I don't like it. That's a great. Is that okay? A good start. To, yeah. It's just an assumption. But yeah. uh, okay. Well, if that's the case, I don't like it. Uh, analyze what kind of pre- what's the pressure. What mm-hmm. pressure are you receiving? Are you creating this in your own mind? Or are you really getting pressure from other people sure. to be a certain way, to uh, uh, to dress a certain way? Think yes. of the things that uh, high schoolers have to deal with yeah. uh, or do deal with. And that is, am I dressed uh, correctly? Now, sure. here we have a dress uh, guideline yeah. here. And Super helpful. It is Yes, yeah. they pretty the students pretty much have to be in dress code yes. here, but not outside of here. Correct. And then you make a decision: uh, Is this the right kind of shirt? Am I wearing the right kind of pants? What about the shoes? The shoes are a big thing now; they're so different. And yeah, uh, people uh, make decisions about what kind. When I was in fifth grade, we didn't have those decisions. <laughs> it right. was all black loafers and white That's socks, true. white crew socks, black loafers, uh, jeans, and a white t-shirt tucked in. Yeah. And with the sleeves, uh, the short sleeves rolled up. Rolled up, slightly, yeah. Yes, a little bit. And so, but that was peer pressure too. Mm-hmm. Uh, what um, what am I having for lunch? Where do I sit? What sure. kind of music do I like uh, mm-hmm. to listen to? And I will listen to what you like, whether I like it or not, because I feel pressure. Sure. Well, what is the pressure? The pressure is that if I don't comply with the values of my peers, mm-hmm. I will not be accepted. Yeah. I will be rejected by them, and I won't have any friends. Sure. And that, uh, and I'll be viewed as a nerd. Uh, now, nerd is a popular term because <laughs> sure. we have the geek squads and we have the IT, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, savant at IT is uh, dressing in a certain way. <laughs> and right. and we don't really, uh, <laughs> it's not out to uh, be a yeah. nerd. It's okay to be a nerd now, but there were, there still are um, influences from mm-hmm. other people to be as they are. Yes, and that is the analysis of where the peer pressure is coming from. Absolutely, is fear of rejection real? Absolutely, it is. It is, and uh, it's more real because I believe correct. Well, you can't correct me because this is an unknowable statistic, but. Uh, how many people are rejected in friendship and relationship at school because they don't do something that complies with everybody's values? Sure. And I, I know that happens. Yeah. Uh, I've seen that happen. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, one student came in uh, this week and uh, talked to me about 
how strange uh, another student dresses, mm -hmm. and that he, this is this is not the way the rest of us dress. And hmm. I said, you know, I know that student, and uh, nice guy. He's yeah. a nice, nice guy. And the answer was, yes, he is a nice guy. Yeah. So just kind of put up with it, you know, and sure. be in relationship with him. But what kind of pressure are you getting uh, from your peers? Is it to be something or to do something? Do you mm. have pressure to be involved in athletics? Do you, sure. uh, because most of our students are. Yeah, uh, the percentage, right. I think, is in the 80 percents uh, wow. of students here. I heard that statistic somewhere. And That's really high. So uh, I don't want to be in athletics. I'd rather be in dramatic arts. Mm -hmm. And I want to be in dramatic arts. Well, there are some people who are in both. Sure. Well, those people are tired. Yes, uh, they exactly. sleep That's They true. sleep during class. Sure. So uh, do I have pressure from some of my students to make good grades? No, not really from the students, but I get it from my parents, and that's not peer pressure, but that is pressure. Yeah. So I have to behave in a certain way, and I have to accomplish certain accomplishments. And, and so right. On. Um, do you have to satisfy the desires of your peers to uh, be in friendship with them? I think we've probably beat this to death already. <laughs> sure. Um, I have spent a good deal of my life uh, not caring, developing the skill of not caring what other people think. Sure. Now, you got to be careful with that. I care what my wife thinks. Uh, but she, that relationship is solid. Uh, yeah, of course. She's not going to leave me, and I'm not going to leave her. <laughs> yeah. And the way I dress around the house, I don't really think about it that much. Uh -huh. She does. She always looks nice. Sure. And uh, I mean, even in pajamas and robe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't, she thinks about those things and I don't. Those, um, I want to please some people, but I don't want to please them to be accepted by them. Right. If I am rejected by them, uh, then I really don't care. But there's still a fine line. Mm -hmm. I have to please my boss. Sure. I, but that doesn't mean that I wouldn't mention to my boss that I think this decision needs to be revisited. Sure. And let me be, and, and you're more polite than I am about these things, but it's I'm true. straight. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> it's true. He was quick to say. Uh, yes, so, yeah. He, yeah, he defeated the Way argument by the example the right there. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I want to... Um, I want to please my boss because I don't want to lose my job. Sure. But I, there are limits. On, you have leeway. You, to, you do have leeway. You and can a, communicate. A boss like, who's yeah. a good boss will see the flexibility and Absolutely. let people behave as they are yes. in order to um, teach, for example, here at this school. We all teach with our own personalities. We're, we're not yes. clones in the classroom. So... Uh, I, I think that it is possible and desirable to work on the skill of not caring what other people think uh, that is about us. So true. <laughs> that is uh, so very true. Um, yeah. If, if if I had happened to start off our answer to this question, I would have led with that. I think of thinking about myself now. I'm in my I'm in my early thirties. And if I think back to my time in high school or junior high when peer pressure felt the strongest, uh, if, if I think about the kinds of things that kids my age were being peer pressured into, and for what it's worth, it wasn't drugs, it wasn't alcohol, it was... Oh, that's a whole other area, peer oh, pressure. It, it, it's a whole other thing. But for me, I, I felt peer pressure just in terms of like, being cool on campus um generically it's 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 a less specific thing anyway um well can i stop the, you for just a sure. second and ask you a question yeah you're one of your great skills is in technology mm -hmm. and electronics mm -hmm. and uh software and all of those kinds of things yeah was that a desire when you were in high school and then mm -hmm. was that nerdy and were there people who said you know nah, i don't think uh, uh i was never picked on for it i've, I've always been good with technology i, I grew up 
my dad w- my dad's always been building like computers like pc you know oh i didn't know that so, okay like the garage when i was growing up would always have like two or three computer cases opened up and all the components everywhere and okay i'd help my dad like you know build those and stuff and um so i've i've always just been like familiar and good with technology that never manifested into things like bullying or like standing out as a nerd um because but you didn't have the pocket protector with the uh, mechanical pencils in it no i mean i i dressed what i would call normally for a student i didn't go to schools with dress codes but i would wear jeans and t-shirts and or hoodies you know like i i just i was a very normal looking kid (laughs) okay Um, whether I was a normal kid or not is a different question. Um, but <laughs> well, <laughs> you're still normal looking. Sure. Uh-huh. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. No, really. Um, I, and I don't feel peer pressured to – I never felt peer pressure to really be a tremendously different person than I was when I was in school. Um, and I think a big part of that is just having the right friends, having the right peers. What do you mean Right. Those who having having people that are just nice and loving and that have a good and perspective. accepting, yeah, yeah, um, not even accepting in like a wholesale kind of like you do you kind of way, but just accepting in a way that like people that are just down to earth and people that have like a normal perspective of what the world and life looks like. Like I was saying earlier, I'm in my early 30s now, and I think about what peer pressure means to a kid in middle school, and I cannot, I could not tell a middle schooler today enough how much the things they are stressing about do not matter. That's the point. You hear that, audience? The things you stress about from peer pressure don't matter. There are exceptions. If Yes. Certainly. If there's a middle school student who's... Uh, parents are going through a divorce. That is a serious and it traumatic is. experience. Yes, but I'm talking generally about like locker, you know, talk uh, in the hallways, you know, uh, passing notes in class. The the kinds of generic everyday peer <laughs> pressure that a 12 year old student experiences, it, they're just inevitably, I think, going to be about things that you will not be thinking about even a year from now, let alone 15 years from now or the rest of your life. The kind of clothes you wear, the kind of music you listen to or enjoy, the car that you or your family drives around in. All right. People don't, I'll just say this. I think normal adults don't spend time thinking about other people in in weird condescending ways i don't think a healthy adult is i agree spending with you. their day yeah thinking ah oh, johnny wears this and you know susie listens to this or what, music. What, like what they we've got our me. own we've got our own things to worry about and think about not even in a peer pressure sense but just in generic like you know to-do list item like we're all just too busy to be worried about what what you wear today do you, you think know what i mean the disciples the the uh the 12 mm-hmm. uh, disciples of Jesus worried about peer pressure. Uh, no. And they would, <laughs> if they you, did, they, they wouldn't have been disciples. Well, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, drop what you're doing and follow me. Yes. Uh, come, yeah. come to me, and this isn't going to be easy. The call of Jesus is come yeah. to me and die. I would say this. Like, if you're feeling peer pressure about things that you're uncomfortable with, um, even even paint that with a moral brush. If you're feeling peer pressured to do things that you feel are immoral. You oh, e- yes. Y- okay. You either have to, you have to drop one of two things. You got to drop your morals or you got to drop the peers. Yeah, that's right. And I would tell you to drop the peers. I couldn't have said that any better. <laughs> um, Matter of fact, I didn't say it at all. Sure. And I'm glad you did. You have to, you have to, th- the best way to deal with peer pressure is make your peers people that don't pressure you. Make your peers <laughs> That's outstanding. right. Yes. Make your peers people that love you, um, and that support you, and that are encouraging. That's like 
I feel almost condescending in my answer because it feels so blindingly obvious. I feel like I'm getting worked up about like, why is this even a thing? I've got to try to put myself in the shoes again of like that 12 year old, that middle school kid. That's a harder thing to deal with. That is a harder uh, thing to contend with. But anyway, we have peers here who are our colleagues, uh, fellow teachers, mm-hmm. uh, uh, faculty members here. Fantastic uh, people. They really are. Yeah, I mean, that's impressive. Uh, CVCS is um, yeah. a, a shining star in the faculty. I think. Yes. Uh, because Best. because of you and me. But, but yeah, I mean, well, clearly we're the, I mean, clearly we we're at the are, top of everyone yeah, else's oh, my list. Goodness, yes. <laughs> Okay, enough of that. The uh, uh, I don't see peer pressure among we, among us. Uh, no, I don't see it. We have only, different personalities. I'll, I'll say this: only the only pressure I feel from my colleagues is in a positive direction. It's in a, a, it's in the direction of excellence. I this is a true thing. I see my fellow teachers at CVCS, and this is going to come across like I'm uh, like an advertisement for the school. I promise you I'm speaking from the heart. I see (laughs) how good of teachers we have here. Yes. And it pressures me to be better. It's a positive peer pressure. I have that too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's a a good kind of peer pressure. It isn't a peer pressure for me to change. Right. Adolescent peer pressure is change. That's to be acceptable to me, yes. to be like me, to be like the rest of us. Don't be different than the rest of us. Yes. But our peer pressure is uh, is positive in that uh, I want to make sure that I am changing the lives uh, or the lives yeah. of, of our students are is being yeah. changed. It they makes, are being yeah. changed. It makes me want to give my best. Yes. Yeah, let me not be nonchalant about yes. this or blasé. I want to, uh, with energy, uh, yes. love my students. Absolutely. I want to pray for them before the class. Yeah. I, uh, sometimes during the class. Yeah. I, that's, I can do that. Absolutely. I, eyes open and talking. I can still pray. <laughs> that's right. Now, okay. Um, I think that all of this having been said doesn't mean that we should not want to change our personality to become more uh, loving. I'm not saying get rid of the idiosyncrasies of our individual personalities, but uh, work on being more pleasant. Work on being more positive. Don't be a whiner. Don't be a complainer. (laughs) Don't be be negative, but be um, more fun. Now, there are some people, I, that just popped into my mind, but there are some people who are not fun. That doesn't mean they're negative. Yeah. They enjoy fun, but they don't express any kind of, of fun or yeah. create an environment. Um, I think it's very important to have a sense of humor. I really totally. don't want to be around people who don't have a That's sense right. of humor. Humorless yeah. people are um, numerous. They're, yeah. they're around, yeah. and they're... Uh, they may laugh, but they may just smile <laughs> politely sure. when something funny happens. Yeah. Uh, I think it's possible to work on uh, being funny, being uh, enjoying humor, yeah. taking the light side when it's appropriate, uh, and avoiding the light side when it's not appropriate. Yeah. I have counseled young pastors um, who are visiting people in the hospital, uh, never joke in pre-op. And always joke in post-op because the anxiety is gone. <laughs> yeah. The pain may be, have increased, but yeah. uh, be careful where you are being light and funny. <laughs> Make it appropriate. But that's part of the skill of, uh, of increasing the desirability <laughs> of a personality. Yeah. Yeah. I think we need to work on that. Absolutely. But that's not a peer pressure. It's, of course. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I, I don't either. I, I feel like we... Okay, how about this? What's the best way to summarize what we've said? From from my perspective, uh, th- who your peers are matters maybe more than any other like variable in, Absolutely. The, in, in, in this question. Uh, surround yourself with good peers. Yes, but that does not at the same... I know you agree with what mm-hmm. I'm going to say here. Th- that does not mean reject people who are not... Yeah. Um, oh, totally. Would not make good friends. Yes. We are to associate uh, and, and show love yes. to all. 
Have you ever heard this? Um, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you'd call it like an idiom or like whatever. I don't know. It's just like a little bit of wisdom. Uh, but it reminds, this question reminds me of it where it says like, you are, uh, like the person you are, the personality that you exhibit is the average of the five people you hang out with the most. I've never heard that. Um, I, I ever, I heard that first, at least a couple years ago. And I think of that every so often. That's true. I think there's truth to it. Okay. I don't know if there's literally. I don't know if it's literally 100, percent you know, accurate. Uh, I think there's truth to it, and I can picture the five people that I, you know, either would call my closest friends or that I hang out with the most, and I can see elements of their personalities in me. It's a, kind of a funny. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe, yeah. Anyway, um, that that little sentence of it, whether it's an idiom or not, I don't know. Uh, that is a good summary piece or a piece to put into our conclusion for this question okay. in a sense. For something the, to think about. Yeah, the peers that you hang out with, the people that you surround yourself with will have a fundamental uh, effect on who you are and on the person that well, you are. Well, on your personality. Yeah. Um, and invariably, going back to this question, it will determine what you are pressured to do or not. <laughs> um, and so peer pressure okay. gets addressed first and foremost with whom you're with. Well, right? that's, that is a big part. Yeah. I'm not sure that I agree that it will change who you are, but it will sure. change who you, uh, the way you express things. Uh, speech can be changed because I'm going to be talking uh, more with phrases yeah. that my friends use and so forth. Yeah, yeah. But we need to be very careful morally yes. who we hang out with. And we need to spend our time with people who are um, in Christ yeah. because there's where the fellowship is. Absolutely. There is no fellowship outside of well, possible with a person who is not in Christ. Yes. We can have socialization. We can have fun. Um, fun. We can have uh-huh. uh, close friendships and so forth, but we will never have koinonia. We will never have uh, a deeper understanding Mm -hmm. of each other because we recognize when we do have uh, the shared uh, environment of being in Christ that we have the same Father. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So number one, the people you hang out with. Yes. Number two, in, in the conclusion for me, I think is important, is, again, the idea of the perspective of uh, to have a sense of perspective to say the things that I am stressed out about as a middle school kid, no one's going to care about, you know, in the future, <laughs> really. When I'm 40. For the most part, you know, um, the, the, the things that True. students or kids can really get worked up and stressed out about are things that you will genuinely forget ever existed Um at a certain point in life. There, there's this sense that I, I get from having worked with middle schoolers now for several years, um, that the, 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 the problems in life that they can identify uh, for themselves, they feel like they will be forever. They feel like those problems will be existential and permanent. Uh, and the perspective, this is the conclusion part, is as best as possible to understand that they are not permanent, that you will get past them and you will even forget that they ever As existed. much as they can understand that and as much as anybody around them can help teach that exactly. to them, yeah. but they are very, it's very real feelings. Yeah. I mean, it's rem- hard to rem- do that. Yeah, Remarks on social media can lead people to suicide, yes. can lead people to depression. Yes. And so those of us who are more mature uh, would be wise to look at the less mature and make sure that our arms are around them yeah. and that they are aware that they are lovable. Absolutely. Okay. Very good. Any other concluding thoughts no. on this? No. I think it's a good place to end. Let's jump to our second segment, which is the surprise Jim segment. Jump to As the name suggests, it's a question uh, that Jim does not know ahead of time, and it's always something a little silly. Uh, Jim, here it is. If you could instantly learn everything about the entire history 
of any one place, person, or topic, what would you choose to instantly become the perfect expert in and why? Oh, my goodness. Um, I said before that I would like, I don't know about being an expert. There are languages I wish I could speak if I could instantly That was a learn previous, them. yeah. That, that was, was a previous yeah, surprise. And the answer Jim. was uh, Italian. Yeah. I would want that. I, um, let's see. I think that I would um, like to become an expert uh, in parts of the entertainment industry, but mostly production, yes. not uh, in front of the camera so much. Although that would be fun too. Yeah, I think actors who uh, work in front of the camera in sitcoms, for example, or even in dramas, if you watch the bloopers, they seem to be having so <laughs> yes. much fun, yes. and yet they are so skilled. Uh, if they're, they're so craft, professional, yeah. I would like that. Yes. I would like to uh, be uh, part of that fun, but I also would like to be part of that expertise. Yes. And uh, I don't know about the, the most expert, but there are some, Meryl Streep comes to mind, mm -hmm. uh, people who can act in any situation. They are the best. They are. Yes. They, everybody recognizes that. Yeah. Any, any, I, I would like that. Yeah. Any, I started to say yeah. any, any, uh, any um, role. Yes. It seems that they can do this. Uh, and there's some other, they, it seems mostly actresses, but there aren't. Tom Selleck is outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has had the privilege of being in two uh, winners uh, series. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I don't. Yeah. I think that so, that's so, one thing that so, would be fun. Yeah. So to clarify, is is your answer that you would choose to learn everything there is to know about acting? Yes. Okay. Yes, acting, and now that doesn't seem all that noble. You know, I maybe <laughs> uh, sure. nuclear medicine, so I could help more people and I'm, all that. But I'm that shocked. isn't it. I'm shocked you didn't say the Bible. The you know, the life of Christ. The, I, I don't want to be you know. an expert in the Bible. I would want to, the Bible yeah. is, is a tool to get to know God. Yeah. And it is a guideline for life. And it is, I don't know if somebody, who is the, <laughs> who is the foremost expert? I don't, the people it's who too, have yeah. the most uh, apologetic, uh, that is to say, well, apologetic um, scriptures memorized to refute yeah. uh, non-belief and so forth. Now, I, uh, I have done that for so long that that doesn't seem new and exciting to me. Sure. Uh, it, it's an accomplishment, <laughs> but uh, having fun uh, in front of an audience, uh, yeah. that, would be, that would be fun. That would be tremendous fun. Uh, so I think that's one answer, um, and I can't think of another right now. Mm. Um, maybe it'd be the world's finest accordion tuner. There you uh, go. That would be great. You yeah. Know? Uh, you could probably charge a high price if, if it's such a specific instrument and if you're such... A master well, only at it. only in September because it's seasonal because Oktoberfest. Comes. Uh, there you yes, go. Yeah, <laughs> lots of accordion music in October. I, I, thought, I thought you were gonna say like because of the humidity and the, uh, no. the way it affects the wood and like the <laughs> like. Wow, you you already are an expert, actually. Well, no. Although uh, that that was a kind of a funny thing, but a uh, joke, but. Uh, I would like to uh, be an expert with certain musical instruments. If I could play mm -hmm. uh, Yo-Yo Moss on cello, yeah. it was outstanding. Yes. Uh, that wouldn't be my – I think Pete Fountain was the finest clarinetist I yeah. have ever listened to. I remember to. you talking about that a couple episodes ago. Oh, my had a, goodness. He yeah. is just out, uh, unbelievable. I can put on his music still and uh, just sit and listen. relish in yeah. it. Uh, yeah. I would like to be able to do that, yeah. but I don't confuse enjoying listening to someone play with I have to play it myself, but sure. I think that I would enjoy yeah. uh, if I could make music like that. Yeah. Are there any topics from history or eras from history that you're just so fascinated in you wish you could just, you wish you could just learn everything about? Um, well, I, I think the... the uh, I think that the appearance of certain uh, uh, inventions would be interesting yeah. to me. Um, when Alexander Graham Bell uh, invented uh, the telephone, uh, and that was serendipitous, he didn't really mean for that to be a communication <laughs> device. Sure. He meant that to be an aid for his uh, deaf wife yeah. and his deaf mother. But uh, 
those things coming into existence, but you and I live right now where there are new inventions every yeah. hour. Yes. Uh, especially in electronics and technology. That's right. Uh, I, who can keep up? I, the experts Nobody. don't keep no. up. Yeah. They use technology itself to keep up with yeah. technology. Technology has become too broad of a topic. Right. To like, there are hundreds of sectors in side of what we would call technology. Yes. And so you can really only focus and be a true expert or innovator in like one or a few areas. They're like medical yeah. specialties. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It's too broad. You have to specialize in something. That's a good analogy. I, yeah. I, but I think that um, a musical instrument and uh, I can't think of an era uh, sure. in history so much i i would have um, i would really like to be a fly on the wall or maybe even had been an expert contributor to the framing of the constitution uh, can you fun. imagine sitting in that room <laughs> and yeah. having one of the finest ideas that have ever come out of the mind of, of man which is the u.s constitution mm -hmm. uh developing that yeah. and then just have a couple of uh, John Hancock sitting around saying, I, I, that's not really a good idea. Let's do it this way. Yeah. And that I would like. That would be fascinating. Wouldn't that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then you know, drop a few hints of, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you considered this? Uh huh. Um, have you thought about the. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it it was a great idea, but they have also had to amend it like twenty something times. Well, that's true. Times. It wasn't yeah. perfect. Ex of course, it's still not perfect. Of course, yeah. But it's not the Bible. Yeah, it, it's absolutely. Not, but it is. <laughs> yeah, democracy. People have said it's not a very good system, but it's the best on earth. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah. But it would be fun to be there and be an expert be in so that kind of stuff. Yeah, that that's a yeah. good question. It's an excellent question. Yeah. I have asked people. Uh, if you could be an expert on anything and be the best in the world, what would it be? Yes. And listen to their answers. And most are uh, paused. They're uh -huh. not sure how I would answer this. It's a superlative. And it so, is. you know, it's it, the best. Or how about just right. good at? <laughs> yeah. Jessica, and recognized as good at. Uh, it wouldn't be chemistry for me. No. Uh, it wouldn't be a lot of things. <laughs> but... Uh, Oh. And, and I keep arguing with myself, is my answer noble? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, no, it doesn't have to be. It could just be. It doesn't have to be, yeah. I, I really want to be good at this because it would be fun to be That's good awesome. at this. Okay, That's awesome. Okay, That's great. Go. Let's wrap it up there. There you go. Uh, we want to thank our audience for listening. Uh, we want to thank, uh, I, I want to thank Jim, as always, just for being here. And, for, and you, Joe. And answering these questions. Yeah. yeah. My pleasure. Um, to our audience, uh, we have an email address set up that is brewingwithjim at gmail.com. We would love to hear, first and foremost, your questions for us. Mm -hmm. If there's some situation or uh, topic that you want uh, our advice or wisdom on, that's like what we br live and breathe on this show, uh, feel free to submit our questions. But also, if you just want to reach out and introduce yourself or tell us a little bit about where you're listening from or how you heard about the show, we would love to hear any of that. So again, that is brewingwithjim at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, with that, that's yeah. another episode. Thank you, Jim. That's it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, audience. We'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye-bye. The topics that are covered and the answers that are offered during episodes of Brewing with Jim are designed to mine the wisdom attained from a life of pastoral ministry and care. They do not constitute professional or clinical training or expertise in the areas of counseling or mental health. CVCS and its podcast network want to provide a platform for the discipleship of our community. Brewing with Jim is our attempt to foster that environment in a format that is accessible for everyone to participate in. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed during the show are the speaker's own, and they may or may not represent the views, thoughts, or opinions of Capistrano Valley Christian Schools or its faculty. The material and information presented here is for general information purposes only. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. 
be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.